guys welcome to yet another video of code from scratch so proud of you for showing up every day we are finally writing the code for a heart level problem of binary search we had covered the problem in detail in the last video we have discussed why binary search has to be used over here so if you have not watched that video i highly highly recommend you to watch that before we start writing the code today we will be focusing on the code about all the edge cases about like you know each line of the code why and how so let's get started this is the function that we have to write this is the array given to us there are n books and there are m students given to us okay so firstly we have to return the minimum value right we have to return the minimum value of maximum number of pages allocated to a student so because we have to return a minimum value first let's take a resultant value that we will be re uh, returning so let's just call it res and because we have to calculate minimum value let's initialize it with int max so that when we compare we assign the minimum value in the result and we return that so in the end basically we'll be returning result okay then we have to apply binary search right so for binary search what is our search space so what is basically our value of l and h so as i'm talking i want you to keep thinking yourself also what is the value of l and h so l we had discussed in the last video will be the maximum of the number of pages that are given to us so the actually array given to us is given in ascending order so it is mentioned in the question that the books are arranged in the ascending order and what will be our l it will be the maximum value uh, in this array right so that is why we will assign it to array of n minus 1 see even if it was not given in ascending order it was fine we could have just calculated the maximum element and used that itself we can actually use the uh, maximum element from the sdl function also or we can calculate it ourselves by just traversing the array once then what will be the h value the higher value in the search space so this was the minimum value in the search space which is actually the maximum of the number of pages that is given to us and the higher value of our search space will be the sum of all the pages that are given to us so we can calculate this sum or we could actually use the str function accumulate to calculate this so for those of you who are not used to str functions we will write it down but i will highly recommend that when you start writing the code you know you should know about the str functions because it will just help you be really really fast in the interviews so when you are writing code i recommend you to use accumulate str function when you are doing it okay otherwise you can do it like this so we initially take the sum as 0 and then we traverse the entire array once so int i equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus and then we just calculate the sum value and we keep adding the array values in this and we calculate the sum so our higher element in the search space is basically the sum now we can start writing the binary search code so what is the while loop that we write while less less, less than or equal to s i shouldn't have to mention all of this anymore and how do you calculate the middle value it is l plus h minus l by 2 yes we have discussed why we are writing this in the tutorial number 2 you can go revise that if you have forgotten or if you are still confused go and watch that video again so we have the middle value now what do we do so what is this middle value actually mean this middle value is the possible answer for maximum number of pages right so we are actually finding the minimum of maximum number of pages given to a particular student for a student basically okay so this is one of the possible solutions now we have to check whether this can be a solution or not what is the condition given to us that there are m students so we'll have to check that okay can this number be possible with m students so we will write that in another function we are going to check whether the configuration is possible or not whether the allocation is possible or not so let's say we call the function is allocation possible and what all things will we need to pass in the function we will basically need to pass the array we will need to pass the number of books the number of students and the mid value mid is will be the maximum number of pages see if the allocation is possible then what happens since it is possible for these many number of pages it will be possible for lesser number of pages also so this is a possible solution yes so that is why we put res value as mid and then we search in the lower half of the array again see if our search space is from l to h and we know that at middle point it is possible this is a possible solution 
So now we check for the left half of the array. Why left half of the array? Because we have to find the minimum value, right? So in order to find the minimum value, we have to check the for the lesser values also. Because if it is possible for the mid value, it might be possible for the lower values also. It is not necessary that this HIF is a solution. So it can be the solution, it might not be the solution. So now what do I do? I move my higher point to mid minus one. See, another mistake that many people do in binary search is that they might just move the higher value to min minus one and they might not assign this. Now, what will happen is, what if this mid itself was the answer? Now, what will happen is you will move your h to mid minus one and at that, suppose h, the answer was not possible. Suppose your mid value was itself the answer. So now in the next iteration, you are not considering that at all and you have not updated the RES value. So if this is a mistake that you're doing in binary search, this is the time when you notice this is small, small points. Because this is a possible solution, you assign it. But if you find a better solution, you will actually update it here itself, right? And if it is not possible, then what happens? Then we have to increase the number of pages because if it is not possible, that means the number of students that we have is lesser. So we will have to increase the number of pages. So how can we do that? We will move our lower value to mid plus one. And that's it. We are actually done writing the entire binary search code. Now all we have to do is write this function. Is allocation possible or not? Let us just quickly revise what have we done till now. So we took a maximum value uh, result, which we are going to return in the end. Then we took lower and higher values of our search space. Lower value is the maximum number of pages that a student can get. It will be the highest possible number of pages that are given to us in a particular book. Then a uh, higher value of the search space will be the sum. That is the case where uh, a student is given all the books. Okay, so we just take the sum of all the number of pages and then that is the higher value. Then we apply binary search. We find the middle value and if allocation is possible, then we try looking for a smaller value. If allocation is not possible, then we try to increase the number of pages by now moving our search space to the right side. There's actually one more case that we should actually consider. I wanted to pause and think of it that I am not handled over here. Actually in GFG, it is not needed to handle it, but just in case, you know, it is not given to you, then you should think of all the cases. What if the number of books that are given to us is less than the number of students? So that is one possible case. So basically if N was less than M, that is the number of students is less than the number of books, then allocation is not possible itself. Then we would have to return minus one. So in GFG, there are no such cases, but in the interview, it might happen that, you know, your interviewer is expecting you to handle this or might be there are some test cases in your test. So you should think of such test cases. See, if number of books itself is less, then each student can't get one book. See, it is given that each student has to be allocated at least one book. Okay, so if the number of books is less than number of students, then the allocation is not possible and we should be returning minus one. Let me know in the comments if you thought of this case or not. Now let's just start writing this function. Is allocation possible or not? Let's see. This is the only part that is left. So what do we have to return? We actually have to return a Boolean variable. We just have to find out whether it is possible or not. Okay. And what are things we are passing? We are passing the array. Then we are passing the number of books. See, N, M, N, N, M are very confusing variables when in interviews and in tests, I suggest you to, you know, write the variables that actually tell you what it means. But because it was given like this in JFG, I'm just writing it like this itself. Uh, even I am getting confused what is N, what is M. So, you know, make your life easier by actually writing the correct variables. Okay. Now, what does actually mid mean? So instead of calling it mid, I'm going to call it max pages that a student can have. So that is actually what mid means, right? That this is the maximum number of pages that a student can get. So now what we have to find whether allocation is possible or not with these many max pages, okay? So what we will do is we will find the number of students needed if a particular student can have these many max pages. Now, if that number of students is less than or equal to M, then your allocation is possible. If that is not there, then your allocation is not possible. Again, to understand this part, you could watch the previous video. So how are we checking? We are going to keep assigning students these many pages, max these many pages, and we will see whether we were able to assign all the pages, all the books to students for number of students less than or equal to M. If it was possible, we will return two. If not, we will return. So initially I'm going to take a variable where I'm going to take the number of students that we have already considered and I'm going to assign this variable as one initially. So two means number of students. 
Then uh, let's take another variable, basically current number of pages that have been assigned to this student, to the student that we are considering. So initially that is zero. Okay. Now we will traverse through our entire books array and we will keep assigning the books to one, one student uh, one by one. Okay. So let's traverse the array. We are going to go like for int i equal to zero, i less than n, i plus plus. Okay. Now one of the cases, again, keep thinking of all the cases yourself. If you're not able to think, then you have to note that, okay, you're missing these cases. Like here we considered when n is less than m. Here there is one more case that you should consider, which is very, very important case. Pause and think about it and let me know whether you thought of it or not. So the case that I'm talking about is if array of i is basically greater than max pages that we can have. Basically, there is a book that we have that has the number of pages greater than the max pages. See, each book can go to one student. So if this book is bigger itself, that means this allocation is not possible. So we will just return false from here itself. Again, what am I saying? See, this is the max number of pages that a particular student can have. A of i greater than max pages means there is a book that has number of pages greater than this max pages. And this book will be given to one student. So we will end up having maximum number of pages greater than this. So the allocation will not be possible and we will return false from here itself. Okay. If this is not the case, let's continue searching. Now we will consider the case when we can just assign the book to the student that we are considering. So right now we are considering the first student itself or just any student that we are at. So basically the number of students is going to tell which student are we considering right now. Okay. So if current pages, so these are the number of pages that that particular student has right now. If that plus array of i is greater than max pages, that means the allocation is not possible and we will need more number of students for the allocation. We can't give any more pages to this particular student. Otherwise, if that is not the case, what we can do is we can just add the number of pages in the current pages itself. Let me tell you this once more. So here what I am saying is that it is not possible to assign this A of I, basically the new book that we are considering. It is not possible to give this book to the student that we are at. Okay, so we'll have to increase the number of students and we'll have to assign it to a new student basically. Otherwise, it is possible. Why it is possible? Because current pages plus array of i will be less than or equal to max pages. It is possible. So what we will do is we will assign the book to the student itself. Because we are assigning the books in contiguous order, so we can just do it in order of n itself. Okay. So here in this case, what do we have to do? We basically have to increase the number of students. Okay. And as we increase the number of students, we have to make sure that the number of students that we have is less than or equal to M. So we will check over here. If the number of students that we now have becomes greater than M, that means allocation is not possible. Okay. So we, whenever we increase the number of students, we can just check. So this is an optimization that we are doing. Otherwise, in the end, we could have just checked it. Okay. If the number of students become greater than M, then it turn false. Instead of doing that, whenever we are increasing the student value, we are returning from there itself. So we won't have to traverse the rest of the array at all. Okay. And these are the optimizations that your interviewers will look forward to. And these are the kind of optimizations that could code us too. So you have to think of these cases. And once we have increased the number of students, that means that we are going to now consider a new student. So when we move to new student, that means we have not assigned any pages to the new student yet. So we are going to assign these new pages, that is the new book to this new student now. So that is why our current pages becomes a, a of i. And we will return true from here. Okay, why are we returning true from here? Because if the configuration was not possible, we are returning false from here itself. So if we have gone through the entire loop and we have gone outside, that means that we can return true from here. Otherwise, if we did not add this condition over here, if students is greater than M, then we could have just added over here that if students is greater than M, then return false, otherwise return true. Let's revise this function quickly. So earlier we took that the number of students that we have is one. So we are considering first student. There are no pages that we allocated. Then we went to the book array. What did we do? We first checked that, okay, the book that we are considering has pages that is less than the maximum pages that we can have. Otherwise, we have to return false. Then we check whether it is possible to assign the book to the student that we are considering. If that is not possible, this is the case. If it is possible to give the book to the same student itself, then what we do, we just add to the current pages. If it is not possible, what do we do? We increase the number of students. 
and if we check that okay number of students is less than m less than or equal to m or not if that is there then if that is not there we return false otherwise what do we do we assign the current pages for the current student as a of i and we just return true from here if you have any doubts let me know let's compile this and see whether this works or not let's submit what do you think will we pass all the test cases yes or no i hope you all were able to understand the code properly we went through line by line this is extremely important we will be doing more such hard questions and these will be based on the same pattern so it should be completely clear but i really really request you that go practice the code yourself even if you know when i am talking you might think that ha huh, this edge case is very normal i will never miss it but when you actually start writing code you might miss the edge cases so i highly highly recommend you to go try writing the code yourself I hope you are able to handle all the edge cases yourself. See you tomorrow. Thank you so much for your consistency. Thank you so much for your love and support. Let's hit 10k subscribers soon. Share the channels with more and more people. It means so much to me. Thank you.